Previously on Silver Sun. Easy now. Retro rockets on standby. Too much, Tony. Too much. No. You just caused major damage to two spacecraft and endangered the lives of crew on both. You're a distraction. I thought I was your girlfriend. You just need to give me more space. That's not what I want. But Tane is strong. He should be able to stand up for himself. Not up against the way Syriax works. None of us can stand up to it alone. But together, they won't be able to control us any longer. There's no going back now. Syriax has to agree. Everyone must be equal. My laser key is missing. Zandy, this prank has gone on long enough. You're going to get very lonely in there. We now are in Deegan Harder with yeah, you. Yeah, all the way. We're not moving until our demands are met. Stop this insubordination now and open the door. No! Star Runner leaves on its 90-year journey to the New World. On board, an elite young crew and 550 settlers frozen in suspended animation. Use a laser act and be in there before they know what hit them. That is a last resort. Somebody could get hurt. You should have thought about that before they crossed the line. No, we have to convince them that they've done the wrong no, thing. No, Challenge skipper. them morally. Knock them down and drag them out. It's their hearts and minds that are at issue. Otherwise, they'll always be a problem. Well, let's get their bodies out of there first. Their minds will follow soon enough. Steve, do it my I'm way. I'm telling you, Commander. No, I'm telling you. Stand down. You stood down. We all underestimated Zandy's power of persuasion. I had enough warning there was discontent amongst the crew. If only I was looking. Don't blame yourself. I'm Leonella's mother. I should have kicked it. I think I'm to blame. The way I broke it off with her. Maybe I could have been a bit more understanding. I'm sure that's not the only reason for her doing this, Tane. The Commander, I've called up Zandy's deep file, but I need your access code if that's all right. Don't you know it already? Pretty much. Stand on dignity. I should have guessed. Guessed what? Zandy is an HT. Oh, no, that's all we need. What's an HT? A hard target. Which is? 10% of all cryons were selected on their potential as fighters. Fighters? All possibilities had to be considered at the start of the mission. Well, what qualities make someone an HT? They're non-conformist, think outside the square, tough, and resistant to any form of persuasion or brainwashing. Just the sort of girl you want running a mutiny. Exactly. So what do you think they're doing? Considering their options. You mean considering our demands? <laughs> I think it's a bit soon for that. So what are they doing? They'll be figuring out ways to try and get at us. What ways? It's best not to try and predict it. That way you're ready for anything. You mean they could try and bust in here? Mm -mm. Syriax is smarter than that. So what will he do? He won't do anything himself. That'd be too direct. He'll send someone in his place. Yeah. Who? Leonella, chill out. Let them do the worrying. Karen! How about Zandy, eh? So she's a hard target. Unbelievable. What, what's a hard target again? Look, we don't know everything about Silver Sun. It might be inhabited by hostiles. So we'll need shock troops if it is. So Zandy's a soldier? A laser gunner. And that was on a deep fire? That's right. Have we all got deep files? Of course. Have you seen yours? But they're only opened on a need-to-know basis. But they tell you a lot about yourself. What would you want it to say on yours? That you've got a brilliant scientific mind? 
That's a given. Something else? I'd love it to say I'm really funny. You're pretty funny. Yeah, but, you know, really be able to come up with those crack-ups, the bubble busters, the, the killer one-liners, you know? Why is humour so important? Well, humour helps make sense of things. So, hit me with your killer joke. You just laugh. Maybe I wouldn't. <laughs> okay, well, you know what a particle accelerator is? It investigates subatomic physics. Mm, okay, so, two guys walk into a bar. One guy says to the other, What do you do if your particle accelerator breaks down? And he says to him, Well, of course, you call some quantum mechanics. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. And very obscure. Okay, I've got another one. As a Martian, an Earthling, and a guy from Uranus. <laughs> That's great. I haven't got to the gag yet. What did that bag ever do to you? Do you want something? Yes. I want those three idiots to wake up to themselves and stop playing their stupid us and them game. What can I do? They're not going to listen to me. They might. Tane, if you feel bad about the way you're ending it with Leonella, then you've got to talk to her. That is none of your business, all right? It is my business when it affects the running of the ship. I've already heard her enough. I don't want to get involved. You already are involved, Tane. Do something. I've got nothing to say to her. That is just so typical of a guy. You can start things, but you can't finish them. Hello, Mara. Is anyone home? Isn't this the problem in the first place? Because I did finish things with her? Finish things properly, not just turn them off like a tap. Who said I did that? We went to cadet school together, Tane. I know you. And that is so typical of a girl. You don't know me well. Oh, what's so hard to understand about a guy? What, you think girls are more complicated than guys? We're certainly more considerate. No, you're just less honest. And yet you're the one who won't speak to Leonella? What, and have a conversation like this one? I don't think so. Bingo, what a surprise. You've probably got a valid cause for what you're doing. <laughs> so you're finally catching on. Could you just let Leonella and Deegan Hart come out and talk to Dr Reese? Run back to Syriax and tell him no deal. Listen, Zandy, Syriax didn't tell me to come. I'm just trying to help. Sure you are. <laughs> you're just operating as any HT would. But don't make the others crash and burn with you. What's an HT? They're just making it up. What's an HT, Mara? Zandi is a hard target. She was chosen to be a new settler because basically she'll die before she quits. <laughs> nice try, Mara. Are you sure I'm not an NG, a naughty girl? It's just disinformation. I would have told you if I was an HT. You didn't know. None of us know what's in our embargoed files and I'm not meant to be telling you this either. Do us all a favour then, Mara. Keep it to yourself. I just thought you should know what's driving you. It would be good if we were in an alien environment being attacked, but it's bad on board a ship. Well, it's obvious what she is, an MM, motor mouth. Are you nearly finished? Well, you heard the lady. Are you going to toddle along and let Dr Reese cure you? There's a big aircon interceptor which runs right above the dorm. They would never expect anything from the ceiling. You've been talking to Steve, have you? No. What's that? Status? I'm losing all our command data. I'm losing all NAVCON feedback. All my coordinates have dropped out. I've never seen anything like this before. The whole computer's going down. What about our fail-safe backups? They're not cutting in. The computer's not running its housekeeping checks or trying to vet itself either, which means it's never encountered this problem before, nor have its programmers. What's going on? We have no navigation, no engine status, no steering response. We have no control. Just go away, Mara. What you're selling, we're not buying. Code red, code red. All crew to the bridge, code red. All crew report to the bridge immediately. What do we do? Just stay cool. It's just another trick. We have an urgent situation at hand. All our cybernetic systems are malfunctioning. 
All of them. So is it an analogue or a digital problem? Well, that's a problem. It's not either. Steve, Sheng, Mara, get on the diagnostic computers. Run all of the troubleshooting tests. I'm losing all my chronometry. Our clocks are frozen. Log time stopped. Journey from departure stopped. Tommy clock stopped. Any thoughts? Anyone? Time has stopped. So, no time data at all. It must be some space-time singularity. A what? A wormhole. What's a wormhole? That's just an expression. But I do think Sheng's right. It's a space-time singularity. Which is pretty much a wormhole. A trapdoor through which we can fall into another time or another place. Or both. So you mean a totally different dimension? If it is, what's our next move? We didn't cover this in our training. No one did, Dane. Until now, wormholes have just been theoretical. We may be the first humans to ever come face to face with one. So wormholes are pretty dangerous, are they? Well, if anyone's ever fallen into one, they haven't lived to talk about it. So what do you think the code red was all about? Leonella, there was no code red. But what if it was true? Last time we had a code red, Star Runner nearly broke up, didn't it? Yeah. Well, there's absolutely nothing happening to the ship now, is there? Maybe they've forgotten about us. Doubt it. Xerox will be flat out trying to figure out ways to break us down. The clock has stopped. Get a grip, Leonella. I know, she's right. The clock has stopped. And so is my watch. Mine too. It's psychological warfare. But how did he stop our watches? Syriax is clever. Nobody's that clever. We are in a code red. All crew to the bridge. This includes you, Cadets Leonella Reese, Deegan Hartbell, and Sandy Brockhart. Ignore him. He's just messing with our minds. OK, but how's he messing with our watches? So what's going to happen next? Nobody knows. It's not good, Skipper. If anything, it's getting worse. Look, I don't know if this is related. I suppose it's got to be, but I'm getting strange impulses from the chips in my implant. Like they're firing out of order. Like the timing's wrong. It's got to be a Mara, I want you to run a search of all the cryon files. See if any have space-time expertise. If so, we'll put them on a... No, wait. Leonella did her graduation thesis on wormholes. Leonella did? I didn't know she was interested in astrophysics. But space-time anomalies are still only theory. Well, that's why we're stumped, isn't it? They're beyond anything we know. We're going through the looking glass. Could someone please tell me what's going on? Cadet Reese. Please fall in on the bridge immediately. We need your expertise on a space-time singularity. Cadet Reese, fall in on the bridge at once. This is an order. <laughs> space-time? What's next? Little green monsters? It's a wormhole. Those things don't even exist. Then Syriax must be getting desperate. But they must exist. That's why the clock stopped. All part of the setup. Leonella, this is not a drill. We need you up here. Fast. That's pathetic, getting Mummy to beg. Mum wouldn't lie to me. Oh, come on. She's a serving officer. If Syriax orders her to lie, she'll lie. We started this. We have to see it through. We knew they'd play hardball. Trust me. If you stay put, their next move will be on Deeks. The mainframe is dumping its servo systems. I've got that too. The cryonic system has no backup now. We need someone in the pod room. Could someone please tell me what's happening? Tycho, Cinnamon, you go and fix yourself something in the D-room. But, Mum... Now, Cinnamon. Cadet Bell, report to the pod facility at once. The cryonic failsafe system is not up to code. Please oversee. Right on cue. What'd I tell you? No Joe with Leonella, so they start on Deegan Hunt. This is so predictable. I 
have no idea what our heading is. All our data is just melting away. It's like the hard disk is forgetting everything it's got stored. What's going on? It's because we're moving towards a threshold where time ceases to exist. And when time itself disappears, all information storage disappears too. So when we actually cross the threshold into the wormhole... All the operating systems of the Star Runner will be erased. We'll be completely helpless. We've got to do something. Yeah, we should have a lockdown of our own. Protesting over their lockdown. Not what I was thinking. Maybe they just don't like us anymore. How can they not like us? We're likeable. We're likeable. And Lionel is my friend. And Diggs is mine. Then we'll go to act as friends and help them out. Come on. So we're locking ourselves in here? No fish brain. We're getting them out. The operating system on my pit is just melting away. Maybe we are near a wormhole. Sirax is playing you like a violin. Coco and I need to talk to you. What about? Not to you, Zandy. To Nella and Deegs. No deal. Now run along. Who says? They're kids. What are they going to do? Let us in. Nella, you've got to help. If you know anything about wormholes, you're our only chance. Deeks, the computer's not looking after the crimes anymore. Why not? The computer's completely jumbled. They're your people. They need you. I'm disappointed in Syriax, using little kids to do his dirty work. We're in big trouble, Zandy. We're all out of ideas. Maybe Nelly has one that'll save the mission. Deeks, your crew. And we're crew. Help us. When we signed on, we gave our word to look out for each other. We need you to look out for us now. I'm going onto the bridge. What? You loser! I'm going to. Fine. Go on, get out of here. You deserve everything you get. You're back. Cadet Reese reporting for duty, Commander. Cadet Bell, likewise. About time. What kept you, slacker? Ah, oh, you know, people to see, places to go. It won't upload the pod data. We'll have to do a manual analysis. Don't let us keep you. Good luck, Dave. So, Leonella, we hear you worked with Oppenheimer. For a semester. Look, all of this is guesswork. But what Oppenheimer proposed was that the only way to preserve machine-stored information while going through a wormhole was to quarantine it into the robot prototype 703. Why is that enhanced? Because the 703 mimics human brain architecture, which is not time directional. So even if time went backwards, memory logic remains the same. That's the theory. Steve, I know what we've got, and we've got no 703 hardware on board. I have 703 hardware on board. bottom of the ship where all the rats run to hide. Don't have time for this, Sandy. Can't you say we're in a real emergency? Just a bit of turbulence, maybe. Probably another one of their elaborate schemes. Oh, will you just stop? The wormhole is real, OK? No one's out to get you. That's just my point. Everyone's out for themselves. I thought you understood that. I thought I had a friend. I am your friend. Last time I checked, friends don't desert each other. These crimes are my responsibility, no matter what. Let's find somewhere safe. Fast. Go! Just like the rest of them. It's getting worse! We're being sucked into the wormhole. You have to upload me. There's a million gigabytes on the mother disk. Nothing I can't handle. Plug me in, Ching. She's our only chance. We could burn out a circuitry if that happens. I can't help. Our automatic heading has gone completely offline. Loser. Just transfer the 
core navcon systems. Do it. Traveling at speeds never imagined. We must be in some sort of free fall. Where the ordinary laws of physics do not apply. Do not apply. All we can do is wait it out. We have to remain calm. Hatcher, how are you feeling? Just another day at the office, Commander. You did well. It's good to see you. I mean, I'm glad you're here with us. I'm glad I could help. You know, you, know, you know, if you did that whole lockdown thing because of me, I'm sorry. You're sorry you broke up with me? Or sorry I inconvenienced you? Well, both. I mean, I'm glad you're here. That's all. Thanks. Check the thermal stabilizer. I'm getting ready, Skipper. We're coming out the other side. We're coming out the other side. Our speed is decreasing. Our speed is decreasing. Decreasing. Our speed is decreasing. We're through. But we've lost all our computers again. No, we haven't. But I've got zero on all my calibrations. I'm on zero too. Status patcher. The computer's up. And online. I'm running cross checks now. All programs are there and viable. But everything's zeroed out. All our chronometry, all our navigation. Just like before. No, not just like before. Then they were just frozen on their reading. Now they've all been clocked back to zero. As though we'd never left Earth. So where are we? We're not in the Milky Way. We should be halfway across it. But we're not. Then we've entered another dimension. We're lost in space. And lost in time. <laughs> 